I remember when Spider-Man Beyond was announced, I didn't like the idea that there was going to be five or six creators on the book, but I was pretty excited to see Ben Riley return as Spider-Man. He's a character that doesn't probably get the love that he deserves. And at the beginning of Spider-Man Beyond, he was certainly doing some things that seemed like they weren't quite the right thing to do, but it felt like the character was being coerced into having to do them. But as Spider-Man Beyond progressed, it was quite apparent, at least to me, that within the story, there was something else going on with Ben Riley. He was doing some things that didn't exactly feel heroic, and it didn't feel like they were in service of the Beyond Corporation, that they were in service of Ben Riley himself. Now that we're at the end of Spider-Man Beyond, heading into this new number one relaunch with Zeb Wells and John Romita Jr., now we see why. It turns out Ben Riley is going to be the next big Spider-Man villain. I don't know what Ben Riley ever did to Nick Lowe. Does he? Does he have nude photos of his wife or something? I don't know, but they certainly don't seem to like Ben Riley very much. The character, it feels like he's the whipping boy for the Spider-Man group editor and their writers. I don't know why they keep doing this. Well, okay, I do know. Okay. I'm half in favor of this new chasm version of Ben Riley, and then I'm half not in favor. Ben Riley is literally a clone of Peter Parker. We have too many Spider-Man characters within the Marvel Comics universe. If you want to keep Ben, ben Riley around, he needs to have his own unique identity. And while I can certainly see why people would say that Scarlet Spider is a unique identity, he's another Spider-Man. I'm halfway on board with him doing something dramatically changing the character. I just don't know that he needed to be a new villain, like a, the new Venom, essentially, for the Amazing Spider-Man comic books. I imagine if you are a Ben Riley fan, you are not very happy right now. I have the details. We're going to go through all the information. I'm going to give you a few more of my opinions on this one. And I definitely want to hear from the Ben Riley fans out there or the ASM fans out there. What do you think about this, Jage? Are you excited for this new character, Chasm? Now let's get to the details. Peter Parker may have faced his clone, Ben Riley in the final moments of Marvel's recently concluded Amazing Spider-Man run, but it won't be long before the two find themselves at odds once again. Marvel announced that. The upcoming Amazing Spider-Man relaunch will see Chasm, Ben Riley's new horrifying persona, he dons at the end of Amazing Spider-Man number 93, swing back into action, and continue to serve as a serious threat to Peter. The publisher said of the upcoming relaunch, after 19 issues of hard truths and soul-searching, Ben is more aware than ever that something within is missing, consumed with the idea that Peter is the source for all that's gone wrong in his life. Ben will now swing through the Marvel Universe as Chasm, a fierce and deeply personal new Spidey foe, just in time for Spider-Man's new era, kicking off next month in Zeb Wells and John Romita Jr.'s Amazing Spider-Man number one. It's an interesting look. I'll give it that. Patrick Gleason definitely gave the character, it looks like a Spider-Man villain, but it looks all new. So I think they did a good job with the design. And the character certainly has motivation, but it kind of does feel like the same motivation as Eddie Brock. Peter Parker ruined my life. Now I'm going to don this new Venom symbiote or I'm going to don this new Chasm persona and I'm going to end Peter Parker. It kind of feels like we've been there and done that. While I must admit there needs to be a culling of the herd regarding the amount of Spider-Man variant characters within the Marvel 616 right now, I do wish they could have found something a little bit more hopeful for Ben Riley. He's a very tragic character. He's literally the clone of Peter Parker, a character who'll never be able to live up to. He thought he was Peter Parker before learning the truth that those memories weren't his after it looked like he was the Peter Parker. It got really confusing there in the clone saga. I'm sure you know that just as well as I do. But I do believe he deserved a better fate in the end. But I can completely understand why Nick Lowe, Zeb Wells, and the other people involved with Spider-Man right now felt like he needed to do something that was definitive and separated him from Peter Parker. If they were going to do this, I wish they would have done something that would have also separated him from Venom. Like I said, it really does feel like an Eddie Brock like 2.0 type of character. Some of you may be confused. You're like, Wes, how the hell did we get here? How did he become Chasm? I'm going to give you the details right now. At the end of Amazing Spider-Man 93, Peter and Ben are battling inside the Beyond Corporation when Ben falls off a ledge and into a pool of chemicals that quickly surround him. Peter attempts to save his clone from the terrible fate, but Ben lets himself be overtaken. Months into the future, Ben is still alive, but has taken on a new identity, Chasm, 
After talking to himself in the mirror for a short time, Ben pulls the chasm mask over his head, a mask that causes him to scream no and stop before he jumps out the window in a new purple, black, and green suit. As I mentioned, the character motivations are very similar to Eddie Brock when he became Venom, but you can see the the origin of this villain, Chasm, is also very similar to Joker, depending on what you take as the Joker origin story, whether he falls into a vat and he becomes something other than himself. I wish they could have come up with something a little bit more original, but the look is absolutely fantastic. And while I must admit Spider-Man does have a fantastic rogues gallery, I don't think there's anything wrong with trying to spice it up with a new villain in here. So, like I said, I'm like, I'm half for it and I'm half against it. The Beyond Era was better than it had any right to be. I will be the first one to admit that. But you could definitely tell there were multiple writers. And I think it made the story arc, and being 19 issues, that is a long time, is very uneven as far as the quality. And I don't think this ended up being the crescendo like moment that they had anticipated because you had so many kind of weak issues from Kelly Thompson, Saladin Ahmed and whatnot. Like the, the best issues were Zeb Wells, Patrick Gleason. I think the ones from, um, what's his name? Cody Ziegler. I think, I think that's the guy he's on spider punk right now. I think those were all pretty strong, but I do believe they had stuck with water two writers on this. And we had some more quality going through the line. When we finally got to this moment, it probably would have been better received because it would have been like, you know, we finally got here moment rather than I'm ready for Amazing Spider-Man 1 to kick off and I'm ready to get to Amazing Spider-Man 900, the next big milestone issue. I do think the lead up and execution to this moment where we had this big reveal of Chasm and Ben Riley and his fate ultimately in this Beyond story could have been better with better planning and whatnot. And I don't think maybe this was the high moment they expected. And I certainly don't think a lot of Ben Riley fans were really expecting him to emerge as this new villainous character within the universe. We do have some words from writer Zeb Wells, as well as group editor Nick Lowe. Let's get to those. First up, Zeb Wells says, Amazing Spider-Man 93 brings us to the end of the mega arc the Beyond Board worked so hard on. And though this story is coming to an end, Ben Riley's journey is just beginning. Keep reading Amazing Spider-Man to find out if Peter can pull Ben back from the chasm. Editor Nick Lowe added, get ready to get to know the most terrifying new member of Spidey's rogues gallery. Part of the point of Beyond was the creation of Chasm, and we have huge plans for the artist formerly known as Scarlet Spider, so keep your eyes peeled, webheads. It certainly feels like there were two reasons for this Beyond Air the Beyond board to have happened. First up, Nick Spencer left very abruptly, and they needed to buy some time to get to this 60th anniversary celebration for Amazing Spider-Man, which is going to culminate with issue number 900. You know, he went to Substack and they needed to fill in the void and they grabbed five people and, and decided to execute something. And certainly the second reason would have been this Ben Riley heel turn where he becomes the next big Spider-Man nemesis. Will it be successful? Only time will tell if Chasm ends up being one of the mainstays in Spider-Man's rogues galley, or perhaps Peter is able to redeem the character and bring him back from the abyss and perhaps he could walk away a hero once again after redeeming himself in the end. I imagine that's not going to happen, and if it does, it's going to be in the distant future. At this point, I'm going to trust Zeb Wells that he has a good plan in mind and that we're going to get good Spider-Man stories. His run on Hellions was absolutely brilliant. He certainly worked with Spider-Man in the past, and it's always been pretty good work. I feel like this could be a coming-out party for Zeb Wells as he kind of rises up, maybe not to superstar status, but somebody Marvel Comics readers know that they can rely on for good quality Spider-Man stories or anything else that he's working on. So I'm in favor of Zeb Wells. We'll see what happens with Ben Riley. Now, as far as Amazing Spider-Man, I've mentioned a couple times, we are in the 60th anniversary year. We are heading towards the 60th anniversary month, which will culminate with Amazing Spider-Man 900. I got a few details on that as well. Along with Chasm, Spider-Man will also face the Sinister Adaptoid, a deadly mega villain that houses all the powers of the Sinister Six in the upcoming Amazing Spider-Man relaunch. Spider-Man group editor Nick Lowe says, there's nothing I love more than a giant-sized Spider-Man anniversary issue, and I'm pulling out all the, ah, uh, whatever doesn't matter what I think. Ed McGinnis is drawing a super-sized Spidey story. Who isn't going to check this out? I'm going to check it out, Absolutely. Amazing Spider-Man 900, they're going to be charging about $10, and we're going, to, we're going to see the Sinister Six become Voltron. Voltron Unite, you know, they're going to be one big, giant, green monster thingy to attack Peter Parker's Spider-Man, perhaps 
Chasm will join in on the fun and torment Spidey as well. It should be the most powerful villain, perhaps of all time, at least since Dan Slot took took on old Spidey and almost killed him. You know what I mean? I do foresee brighter days ahead for Amazing Spider-Man fans. I know a lot of people were upset that Nick Spencer left so abruptly when his run was going pretty darn well. He did some really good things there at the end. But I'm on board for Zeb Wells. I'm excited for Amazing Spider-Man 900. I'm not excited to spend $10 on it. But an Ed McGinnis giant size Spider-Man will probably hit the spot. And I imagine it's going to be a fun story. Sounds like it's going to be stupid fun. This sinister adaptoid thing has got dumb written all over it, but it could be the fun kind of dumb that I'm all into. Now, as far as Scarlet Spider himself, Ben Riley, if you know who Yellow Flash is, he's a big time YouTuber. He came out of the channel last year and we talked about Ben Riley returning for this Beyond Era. He was very excited. We had a big long conversation about why I like Ben Riley so much. I imagine. He's not happy about this, but check this video out and you can hear from the biggest Ben Riley fan that I personally know.